Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to It's Gorgomatic and Hail Hail the Gang is all here. There's <laughs> Kevin Gorg uh, from Parts Unknown. He'll let us know from what uh, facility he's joining us from uh, this morning. And uh, and she's back. Senator Carla Bigham, nice to see you. We missed you last week. Oh, good to see you both. Uh, I miss you guys as well. We had your pick in there last week. One of them did not play because Kamara was not a, 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 a yeah. lineup player. But you hit your your other uh, play and thinking big, and we'll have that again. And KG, where do we find you this morning? Beautiful San Jose, California, as the Wild uh, get ready for leg two of this uh, four game journey out uh, through Canada and now through uh, basically California and Las Vegas. So we've got the Sharks tonight, the Kings on Saturday, and then into Vegas on Sunday. Uh, it, again, anytime you can be in warm weather when it's snowing back home, uh, you're going to feel pretty good about it. And we are going to talk football. That's why we're here. But we're both sports fans, and you have that inside track. You're going through something where we, we – so we live vicariously through you. <laughs> and obviously the Wild did it again on uh, the other night. A great game at, at Edmonton, uh, playing tonight at San Jose. We'll touch on that. But just what was it like, the reaction of the team? How did they respond to knocking off the Oilers in a place where, what, they were like 9-2, and two, I think, at home going to that game? Yeah, that was a big win. And to kill off five uh, penalties against the league's number one power play, I think the boys were pretty excited about that. And, and then uh, I, I just think that Cam Talbot, once again, going back, facing one of his former teams, uh, I think the boys worked hard for him, and I think he played one of his better games of the season. I think we continue to see this team build confidence uh, in itself and in its goaltender. And, uh, you know, seeing yesterday, it was an optional skate before the, uh, the airplane took off. Of course, Kirill Kaprizov and Kevin Fiala were the last two up the ice. There's like a couple of little kids out there doing all their work on, on shooting and skating and skills. But the, the best news was Jared Spurgeon uh, skated throughout that optional skate and looked good doing it. I think there's a fair chance he returns tonight. And when we asked Dean Evison about that, um, he smiled, but he also said, what a tough decision because the players that have received the, uh, the ice time since he's gone out have been unbelievable. And I think specifically Jordy Ben uh, benefited the most as far as minutes go since he went out. And, and Jordy's been un unbelievable. So someone's going to come out if Spurgeon's back in, and probably not fairly so, but he is your captain and your best D-man. And, and to see um, Merrill move up into the, the number one pairing, keeping the two pairing intact, who were absolutely brilliant the other night in, in Edmonton, but Kulikov's goal. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't see that coming. I, I you know I'm watching from it, above the lower bowl. I've got a little station there in Edmonton, and I see the puck the extended long pass. And I'm like, Oh, it's gotta be a forward. And I'm like, wait, that's 29. That's cool. What the hell? And then the move. And I'm like, really? Okay. I did not. I, I'll be the first to admit that caught me off guard. Well, I caught my wife off guard too, because we're watching this, you know, in bed and I'm giving her this, you know, Ooh, she's me <laughs> hanging. And I'm like, you gotta give it back to me. You know, she was like trying to work, you know, so I was just like beside myself. What a pretty goal all the way through and what a great finish. And so, and then he, I started looking at tonight's game. I'm like, Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. The last time we saw this team, they outdid us in every facet. And I think won four to one at the four, X at the X sharks won four one. Uh, they're, they're certainly capable. They've got some high end talent. You know, we remember Brent Burns from his wild days. He's a star defenseman. Eric Carlson scored in the game you referenced. And frankly, the wild are never in the game. Jewel Erickson that cut a 2 nothing lead down to 2-1 early in the second. Sharks responded two shifts later, and Minnesota could never get any traction in that game. So I'm certain in the back of their mind they're looking for a little payback tonight. And the way they're playing right now, it's it's hard to, to buck the trend. I mean, they've won against some of the league's very best teams. The Sharks come off a win against Calgary, who was red hot before that game. So, again, another great test tonight for Minnesota. All right, They got a lot, of, they got a lot of juju. That's for yeah. sure. They just got they got it. They got the energy, and they're being consistent. And they're it's just it, it's I, it's fun for me to watch the highlights on Twitter because again I cut the cord, but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's uh, definitely um, I'm, we're going to be going to one of the games in in January, and I'm looking forward to it. But it they're just a, I mean exciting team right now. You may want to ask Santa. For, for a re-up, you know, because I'm telling you, these games are, are, are fun to watch. And we may need this because it's a 9.30 start tonight locally. 
And about that time, we're probably going to know a lot more about our <laughs> Minnesota Vikings. They have a 7:20 start uh, against Pittsburgh. Uh, they are the subject of Thursday night football tonight. Steelers six five and one. Vikings five and seven. KG, the line three and a half or three. I've seen three and a half basically all week. Okay. Maybe it bumps down to three. I doubt it though, especially with the news that's breaking this morning out of the Twin Cities that I just saw on Twitter that it looks like Dalvin Cook miraculously, and I don't know how this is possible, uh, is going to try to give it a go. And he's he looks like he's going to be uh, back in for Minnesota. So I, I don't see that line much moving from where it's been all week long. It, you know, if he's fully healthy, I'm all for it. But if he's not you know, 100%, I think that could be an issue as well. Well, and, and there's it's, Steelers are the number one uh, rush defense. So in the league. So, I mean, I know that Delvin is good. A healthy Delvin is good. Uh, I agree. I, I think it's not worth a risk um, against a, a very good rush defense. Yeah. And, and um, it's questionable. And that your, your sense of I haven't been doing what I've been doing. I hadn't seen that when I was on Twitter earlier. I knew he was questionable. He was limited in his participation in the two practices that they had. Um, I don't understand that, but okay. And and I don't know that it changes anything anyway, but the Vikings giving three and a half over under 45. And um, this is one of those games where if you're a Vikings fan, do you still believe that this team is capable of reaching the playoffs? And if they reach the playoffs of doing anything, or have you gotten off and are you ready for regime change? Because it seems like to me with Steelers at six, five and one in the situation, the AFC Vikes at five and seven, this is an elimination game tonight, isn't it? Yeah, it is hundred percent. I mean, uh, especially if you're Minnesota, you go five and eight, then it's pretty much done. If you win the game, uh, you have, you still have a hope to get to nine and eight. And unfortunately, uh, in the NFC, the way it's going to lay out, nine and eight might get you in. I'm, I'm not saying it's going to get you in, but it gets you in the conversation. And if you win tonight and you're a game below uh, 500 with four to go, you basically have to go three and one to get to that that spot, which is very doable when you're playing bad teams. But as we've seen throughout this season, I just don't know if this team is consistently uh, good enough to, to go four and one here down the stretch. Well, and we're playing two games away outdoors in December. At night. Again, at night on, on national TV. So, I mean, I – I mean, Vikings are going to Viking. I, I just think, um, you know, it sounds like we're going to have um, our linebackers back and um, a, a healthy secondary, but that line is just the problem. And when you're going up against uh, Najee Harris, and I know we'll get to this, who averages over, you know, close to 70 yards a game, uh, rushed 70 yards against Baltimore, um, you know, who, who, Oh, Baltimore is the number one rush defense, not Steelers. I think I said that earlier. Okay. My bad. My bad. Steelers so, are right in the conversation, though. They're, they're top they're five rush yeah. defense in fantasy. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, they did, he did that against Baltimore's defense. And, and we're nowhere near Baltimore's de defense against the rush. This guy's going to run against us and he's going to, I mean, it's just, it's a problem. And then let's talk about the fact that, that TJ Watt. I know a lot of people are talking about his brother too, you know, through the years, but this, this kid leads in sack uh, for the whole league. He had three and a half out of seven last hmm. week. Yikes. I mean, if I'm Kirk, I'm, I'm eating my Wheaties today and maybe, you know, taking some ibuprofen before I play. <laughs> <laughs> a couple weeks ago when they were playing San Francisco, I was interested in the Bosa and O'Neill matchup, you know, to see you know, how that was going to play up. Bosa had a sack. On the other side, they flipped him and he beat Derisaw. And and that's his only sack he got. Brian O'Neill, uh, I'm fine with Brian O'Neill. He'll bring on all comers. This guy yeah. has done nothing but overachieve since the minute he put on a Vikings uniform. Mm -hmm. We may be talking about the most underappreciated mm -hmm. all-time Minnesota Viking in Brian O'Neill. No, I'm with you all the way. I he, He's been fantastic. Uh, there. There's a way to get the job done tonight if you're Minnesota. I mean, you're not playing world beaters here. I mean, let's be honest. Pittsburgh is a very uh, middle-of-the-road team with a quarterback that probably stayed a year too long. So I, I'm not going to paint a picture of, like, this is some impossible task. The Vikings are favored for a reason. It hurts that Thielen's out. I'll be very curious to see how Pittsburgh reacts to what Jefferson's been able to do, and I, I'd be shocked 
if Mike Tomlin and that coaching staff don't find a way. You can't eliminate a talent like J.J., but you can certainly limit it. We've seen double-digit catches and crazy yardage, uh, but that's Detroit, man. This ain't Detroit. This is Pittsburgh. I, I got a feeling they're going to slow him down as much as they can, and then it's going to come down to that Madison, and if Dalvin plays that combo, uh, if the Vikings can get them in space with some quick hitters because outside of, of Justin Jefferson and maybe Ty Conklin on, on some short passes in the red zone, how are they going to move the ball? They're just that that Thielen injury is a problem for me. Mm-hmm. It's I, going to be interesting to see how they approach it. Uh, let's get about it. Um, so we're getting a little gorgomatic right there. So you heard what uh, Kevin was talking about. We'll just throw it up there. The banner. Thursday night football: Steelers Vikings line Vikings given three and a half over under forty five kg. Yeah, this is a, a no brainer for me. And again, I, I'm a Viking fan. I, I'd love to see these guys rally and make the playoffs. So I'll say that right now, but. Uh, when you're putting together a handicapping slate, you, you put your heart aside and you play the game. Tomlin's five and two as an underdog against the spread this year. He's eleven and four in his last fifteen minutes as an underdog. And I've watched this guy as a coach in situations like this, in big spots, get the job done. I am going to trust Mike Tomlin and the Steelers. I'm getting more than three. I'm getting three and a half facing a team that when even when they win, they win by the hair on their teeth. So I'm taking the Steelers. Plus the three and a half. Timmy, I think I'm on the right side of this game. 100%. Not going to get any argument from me. And if we had this agreement up at the Capitol, we'd actually get stuff done. Kate. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you need to come up and get Gorgomatic in our caucuses up there. First um, thing I'll do is get legalized wagering in Minnesota, like yeah. Wisconsin and Iowa are going to have. Yeah, I'm so going I'll be on a, top of that. I'm going to a conference this weekend about that. So that'll, that'll be good. But, um, you know, there's something about Mike Tomlin when he plays the Vikings. Um, he's got something to prove. He always plays our teams with a little bit of a chip on the shoulder for a reason. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's it. But it's Thursday night football. So, and we've seen this year just crazy stuff happen on Thursday night. And the Vikings do not do well, especially Kirk Cousins doesn't do well on national television. Um, I think three and a half is, is I mean, this is a great, great play. Take it. When I looked at the schedule and I saw the Thursday night game, the game at Lambeau Field in prime time, the game at Soldier Field in prime time at the end of the year, I thought somebody at the league office knows Kirk Cousins' history of playing <laughs> under the lights in prime time, you know, and and but that's we need to build up a record before we get to December. Well, we built a record, not not what I was intending. You know, right. I, I thought maybe they could stagger and stumble down the stretch, and they and they they're staggering and stumbling, but now we get to the real tests. And, and so I, I have no faith in it. So uh, I think that along, I want to be contrarian. I just really can't. And I love the Vikings. And then when I sit down, I'll be pulling for them to do well, but I'm really off the, the, the bandwagon with both these guys. And I don't want to extend this anymore. I really don't. So maybe this is an early, I don't see the Vikings. If they lose this game, I don't think we get together tomorrow, Kev. And I don't see, think we hear the Wills fired. No, I think it, at this point you write it out, but I, mean, I think Barring a miraculous run into the playoffs and maybe a playoff win, I think there's going to be some changes. And, you know, again, we don't wish for anything ill on anybody's careers or jobs. Nope. That's not what we do here. Uh, there's a time and place for everything. And these guys are going to land on their feet. They know what they're doing. It just might not be the right fit at the right time here. Um, and, and coaching and GM changes, you know, are necessary at, at all levels in all sports. And I'm watching Bruce Boudreaux right now with a team that was left for dead a couple of weeks ago the Vancouver Canucks, and that coaching change has worked out there. It can work a lot of different places. Bottom line is uh, I think this is a tough spot for Minnesota. There's a lot of distractions away from just playing Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers, and I think the fans aren't the only ones that are frustrated right now. So if things don't go well early in this game, I think it really could spell some trouble. Yeah, And there's no doubt Zimmer will be part of Bloody Monday. I mean, I don't care how many more games you win. I think he's done. I I just – Spielman might be able to save his job, but <laughs> but I think <laughs> I'm just oh, saying. Boy. Uh, but I think Zimmer. I think if if they win a couple more games, they're. I mean, he's. It doesn't matter. He's going to be done. There's just no longer a fit. There's no more. They don't believe in him. He doesn't motivate. I, I agree with all of it. Yeah, and and um, I think part of it for. I'll just end this this part of it by saying, I think what we've seen with the Minnesota Wild has just push me to believe that we need, we need a fresh start because if you would have told me two, three years ago, looking at the wilds prospects 
and and who they had on their team and the attitude and the rest of it. If you told me this season was even possible, I'd have gone like, "You're what are you smoking? You know this right. th- this ain't happening." And and how fast they've done it. If you put the right people in the right places, and I think the Wild has done that. And they they took an embarrassing move where they had to pull somebody out and go, "Hey, we know we just hired this guy, but he's not the right guy, so he's gone." And then they got the right guy. So yeah. it, it can be done, and and I want that for the Vikings. I want that for their fans. I don't believe. So let's go into tonight's game. You you said, how does this work without Adam Thielen? And it plays into one of your prop plays. It does. I, I think KJ Osborne is a super sneaky uh, daily fantasy player. His over under on yards receiving is forty two and a half. If you look at the body of work this year, that looks like a big number. But if you break down how this game should play out, um, he will be the number two option in the passing game. And the Vikings love to throw the ball. And I think because Pittsburgh's going to give them all they want, he'll they'll have to throw the ball. So I like Osborne to go over 42 and a half. I think he might score a touchdown tonight. Uh, yeah. I picked him up in one of my season-long fantasies. I, I really like him a lot. And then the other one that I've got on my in my slate is Najee Harris. You guys talked about him earlier. He's minus 120, so you got to lay a little extra juice to get a touchdown. But I say Najee Harris gets that touchdown and does it tonight, uh, I think, when it really matters the most in the second half. Pittsburgh's a team that can wear you down with the way they play, and I think this is the guy that benefits. We saw it last week in their win over Baltimore. They were a better team in the fourth quarter because they kept running the ball. Even though he struggled early in that game, they would not go away from Najee Harris. That's the recipe tonight. He scores. And just like it's Gorgomatic uh, and a touchdown by Najee Harris, it's automatic. I mean, nice. he's going to – he's going to – He's going to get it. Beautiful picks, KG. Well, let's Thank get into you. your thinking Bigham. So let's do that. Let's think Bigham. Where do you want to yep. start? So um, I totally agree with what uh, KG has said. I think Kirk Cousins is actually going to use uh, um, Osborne and um, Coughlin. Uh, Co- Coughlin. Coughlin. Uh, he, Coughlin. He loves um, him some Coughlin. Yes. And I think he's going to throw a couple of TDs, TDs today. Um, he nice. Loves the, quick, the quick check downs and – um, I, I just think that's, that's how we may not get more than two, um, but it's okay. Uh, I think that, uh, that's going to be their game plan. I think he's going to use what he knows. I, I couldn't agree more that, uh, he's going to be the number two receiver with Thielen out. Um, and I think they're going to find a way to stop Jefferson. And I, I just think this is going to, he's going to rotate between those two. And then the other one plays off of, of, um, KG's prop play. Uh, Najee Harris is going to have over 70 mm. uh, yards because our defensive line stinks. And as I already said, <laughs> that they, they, uh, Najee ran over 70 yards against the number one rush defense in Baltimore. And they don't yeah. go away from that game. I think he's going to have over 70, 70 yards. Love it. I, I love that play. That's, that's how Pittsburgh's going to, I think that's their game plan. Yep. I think they are going to use him early and often to establish the, the clock, take the crowd out of the game. I, I, I will concur that that play to me makes a lot of sense. And I think that's a cousin's going to be chasing tonight. I think that he's going to be throwing the ball because yep. he's going to have to. And, yep. and so I think I like the pick um, and watching what the Vikings defensive line has not been able to do the last couple of weeks. It's not fair. They just don't have, well, you know, it, is, it, has, it has been fun to watch because they just don't have the players you expected to be there. But that's the NFL. Every team's dealing with that, you know, yeah. and it's and, not going to get easier. And the only way that they stop Najee Harris is a continuous blitz. And as we saw on the final play last week, you wouldn't want to bring pressure, would you? No. So he's not going to bring pressure. That's not part of his, you know, that's just not part of the game plan. So therefore, you know, he's going to, Cousin's going to be chasing. Najee's going to be running. So okay. I wanted to, if it's okay, um, and yeah. I know you, we got, I would like to show you uh, for Super Draft. I've already recorded my uh, show for tonight for Super Draft, which is at 11 a.m. on this uh, Let's Play Sports Network. But I always give people a couple lineups for the game. And and so I did that tonight. And when I went through it, I went through and identified. And now Super Draft is doing what they call a champion co-champion. And so your, your champion gets their points plus 50%. And your co-champion gets their points plus 25%. So your first two picks are critical. So Monday night, I had the first two uh, New England Patriot running backs, and they were the right call. Unfortunately, Hunter Henry and and Mac Jones killed me because they got no points, right? Uh So you got to have more balance. But I looked through this, and you can – you can. Slice and dice this as many ways as you want. I think that this will this pot is going to be like 
all over the place because people's picks are going to be all over the place because there's not really that clear cut, you know, person or, or player, but there's, a, I think, a finite pool of 16. So so here they are. Uh, my first lineup, if you'll let me, and this is before I heard your, your news about uh, um, Cook, but I, I've got uh, Chase Claypool as my champion with uh, Deontay Johnson as my co-champion. Uh, so we don't use a, a, a in super draft, you don't use a, um, a, a, cost you know it's not five thousand or ten thousand you have a multiplier so chase claypool has a 2.45 multiplier deontay Ooh. johnson has a 2.05 multiplier whereas a kirk cousins has a 1.5 multiplier so you you're, you're you're incentivized to use somebody who's not necessarily you know so i put i chose chase claypool as the champion just because he's getting a half point more than deontay johnson is i think that uh, the vikings defensive backfield is a mess I don't think they're going to be able to generate a pass rush. I think that's a recipe for disaster for the Vikings on a fast track. I think the Steelers will throw the ball. and um, But there you see your guy, Najee Harris, is right there too. I have Harris there. My Vikings, I have Jefferson and Madison. And the one thing I've seen on Thursday and Monday games is the kicker is factored in every one of those games for a month. And I have not gotten in on that. So I've got Boswell from Pittsburgh in on this one. So mm -hmm. this this lineup tells the story of the Steelers win this game. But I don't ever remember putting together a lineup without either starting quarterback anywhere on there. But I, I didn't in that one. And then I my alternate one is, okay, the Vikings find a way to win. And there comes your K.J. Osborne as a champion. 2.8 is his multiplier, nice. which is which is, is super high. And there's Jefferson at 1.75 as the co-champ. Then I've got Madison Harris. I put Deontay Johnson in there just to be different. And then I come back with Greg Joseph. Now I also have my – and the guy who I work with, he likes Magnificpicks, so that's what I call him. So here's your <laughs> here's your Magnifa leftovers. Prime move. There you go. So, these, these, you know, you could do a whole other lineup with Cousins, Roethlisberger, yeah. Fryer, Muth, Conklin. So i got both tight ends, both quarterbacks. And add any two players from the previous two lineups that you saw. Well, there Kevin, you go. Your thoughts. I, I, I love it. Uh, I like the leftover lineup just in case the other ones aren't hitting. You've got one right here that could really blow up. I, I would add uh, on this one, I might even add Adele and Cook just to make sure you have For a sure. sprinkling of Cook. And, and then I would put uh, I would put the, uh, the Najee Harris in there as well just to kind of give yourself some stability. But, no, I, I love the fact that you've got players that are off the general public uh, at the top of the list that are the multiplier guys. I love that you have Chase Claypool, who's a wild card in this game, who either goes three for 36 or eight for a buck 30. And that's what you're looking for. I mean, and you've got to be contrarian to separate yourself from the other people that you're competing with. And, you know, KJ Osborne, another player that's going to be overlooked tonight. He might be used. He won't be at the top of the list. So you're giving yourself leverage on the field. And that's what I love, Timmy. Uh, I love them. I love them all except for Roethlisberger. He's just not accurate anymore. Um, he's at like a 63 completion rate. I just, I would switch him out with somebody else. I love all of them though. No, no, no you don't have to love. I, that's why I'm interested because I know you'll be playing tonight too. Yep. So I mentioned your feedback and I, I don't want to hear tomorrow from KG. How come <laughs> I didn't put Kenny Frankenfurter in there? You know, cause he comes wow. up with these guys. I'm like, wait a minute, who? Well, you found Friar Muth and I'm yep. telling you, Friar yep. Muth is the guy, right? Yep. I mean, if, if, you know, if, if KJ Osborne is the guy, on the Vikings side that gets overlooked that could blow up tonight. Fryermuth is the guy for Pittsburgh. And even though Roethlisberger isn't great between the 20s, when he gets in the red zone, he mm -hmm. tends to elevate. And what does he do? He looks for tight ends. So Fryermuth to me is the guy that uh, – the Friday morning guy after the Thursday night special that could could jump up and you found him. So I, I think you've got leverage. I think you've got, uh, I think, a diverse lineup that might not be – duplicated which gives you the chance to house the pool which i always think is uh is necessary so timmy i would tell you to to double down all right do what you just did and then do it again double down and let's get some money going here uh, you know what you're the master that's why i just want you to see what i do and i, I want your <laughs> feedback because i trust you brother that that's what it's all about this is a man who went three and oh monday night yeah. 13 and three last weekend so there is your Amazing. insight uh, for tonight uh senator great to have you back Thank you for having me, guys. This is fun.
It is. It's fun. That's what we're all about. And then, of course, after you watch the Vikings, get over to Bally Sports North and see our guy KG. That He'll be working that game tonight. We've got the San Jose Sharks taking on your Minnesota Wild, and KG is going to get up bright and early and do this again tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll digest this game, and then we'll get into the weekend. And w- is there going to be an Army-Navy play? Hey, oh, there's, Navy. A, there's an Army-Navy play. And I've got a trend in that game that is as tried and true as a trend I've seen all year long. I can't give it away right now, but I'm telling <laughs> you, this trend I think is like 14 of the last 15 years in this matchup. It's come through. So yeah, I've got a strong opinion on that game, and it's the only college game in town, so we've got to play it. Boom. There you have it, everybody. You know what? Every once in a while we think big em. But every dang day, we are Gorgomatic. And I know you wouldn't have it any other way. Thanks, guys. Thank you. you Have a great day, guys.